Good evening. It is a great honor to be here tonight and to serve the Lord, especially when we listen to God's words. God's words are clear and trustworthy. Our brother read for us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 22 to 33. This will be the focus of tonight's service. Let's bow our head in prayer. Lord, no words can be of value unless they are your words. We trust you and we thank you for speaking to us tonight. I ask you to bless the service and for each one of us to take your word to heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. The reading we shared from Luke 12 is very clear. It is summarized in Do Not Worry. If we observe our daily life, we find that we worry. And sometimes we worry about little things and sometimes big things. Worry affects our ability to have clear thinking, reach goals, and many times we find that we need to learn not to worry. This leads us to look at the Sermon on the Mount. When we look at the Sermon on the Mount, it tells us the type of person that will inherit the kingdom of God. That person does not depend on his abilities, his talents, or his success. It depends on many other things that have to do with God's kingdom. In Luke 12, Jesus tells us to be on guard. This came after he talked about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. The warning is to be careful not to fall into the trap of greed. He says, watch out, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. This is opposite to what the world tells us and how the world operates. We define our lives with titles, status, wealth, houses, and possessions of all kind. But Jesus teaches us that's not the right way. He says, life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. It's much higher than that. Jesus gave us a parable. He used the parable of the rich fool who gathered in abundance and said to himself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. I retired in 2019, and since then I realized it is chasing after the wind. I was told you need to save enough 
money for your retirement. You need to define your retirement goals. You need to have a monthly income to support your retirement lifestyle. These are the places you should visit in your retirement. But soon you might find out that your life is taken away after your, you worked very hard to secure all these goals and then you find out that you are that rich fool. We all know that Jesus was not against planning or hard work. He wants us not to depend on our own understanding, our shrewdness, our resourcefulness, or our own planning. In Jude 4, 13, it says, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on a business, and make money. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. So God warns us, do not worry. This is the message. We know that our life doesn't only consist of food, clothing, etc., but also feelings, thoughts, desires, wants, will, and many complex things. I will share with you seven principles to follow. I believe God wants us to pay attention to those things. The first one, the pitfall of worry. Worry is putting too much care into something that might or might not happen. It is a fear that something bad might take place. There is nothing wrong with planning or choosing how to conduct yourself, how to dress in the morning or how to feed your children in the morning. But it becomes, if it becomes a focus or of great importance, then there is a problem. If you wake up in the morning and you are so anxious on what to wear because you want to impress others and it becomes a source of worry, that is wrong. Worry suffocates a person and prevents a person from advancing forward because it keeps you occupied, it keeps you busy, it prevents you from taking forward steps. And you find that the person cannot even enjoy what is to come or how the day is unfolding. I read something that I liked. It said, worry does not prevent tomorrow of its sorrow, but it robs today of its joy. Jesus speaks to everyone. He spoke to the poor and the rich alike. The poor might be anxious because he doesn't know where to go, how to find food, 
but also the rich has fear and an anxiety that things might not be enough and he might not be able to impress others. We all worry. Sometimes worry is essential. For example, if a student is preparing for an exam, he is a little bit worried and he doesn't want to fail. But if that worry prevents him from sleeping, eating, or even focusing on what he needs to study, it is an unhealthy worry. Number two, the need for food. What we read, we see Jesus using the example of birds, in particular the raven. Many people don't care for the raven. And they think it is an ugly creature. But Jesus uses birds and even the raven as an example that God secures its food and he makes sure that he will be fed. Now this does not mean that the raven will not seek its food but God prepares for it to be fed. We look at Psalm 147.9. It says, God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they, are, when they call. He does not leave us needy. If God cares for animals, birds, and all creatures, why? Would you worry? How could you fall in such a trap and think you might not have enough? He will take care of you. The believer should ask God for wisdom and clarity instead of, instead of worrying. God, give me clarity to do your will. Live according to your plan. When we look at the Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians 3, he says, If a man will not work, he shall not eat. We hear some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. So Jesus does not ask us to stop working, but to stop worrying. We need to trust God, but also to seek our food. Jesus does not tell us to be lazy. He tells us not to be anxious. Number three, worry does not change or improve things. It can be crippling. Sometimes when someone asks a question, maybe how are you doing, it has tones of grumbling. The answer has tones of grumbling in it. Many times you ask, you know, what, what is happening? And the person is unhappy. The Christian usually answers the question, how are you doing? Thank God. Even if that person has trouble in his life, but that person is grateful to God because complaining and grumbling never changes circumstances. 
Jesus says, worry does not add a single hour to our life. Worry will not increase our days. Why are we worrying? There is no use for worry. It is only an indication that our trust and hope in God is shaken and perhaps limited. We need to re-examine our thinking. Science says worry has a negative effect on our body. It causes changes to hormones produced in our body, reduces appetite, ruins digestion, leads to an anxiety, uncomfortable sleep, irritation in behavior, and affects proper thinking. It even exposes our body to illness. 85% of the illnesses we get are from worrying. Even if you take medication, medication might help you, but also it has side effects and might wreck other things in your body. A Christian should bring all his trouble to God and ask for help and direction, whether it is about family, children, work, or even health. Number four, God clothes us. Some people love being dressed well and worry about their outward appearance. Jesus mentions Solomon in Luke 12, 27 and 28. He says, consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? I come from Palestine, and when you look at the hills with the wild flowers in spring, they are amazing. If you go to Banff or Lake Louise and look at the beauty and the splendor of God, when God removes the anxiety and worry from your heart, you will have clearly see, you will clearly see the beauty around you. Each one of us knows that People put so much weight on outward appearance when there is a wedding or a gathering or some celebration, what they're going to wear, what food they're going to have, what they are going to display, because this is all about outwardly appearance. And sometimes they spend so much money and they, it will put them into debt. Now, some people are wealthy and can afford to spend tons of money on events. I met a tailor once here in Edmonton who does uh, things for the oilers and for the mayor, and he told me, I make suits for tens of thousands of dollars. But I find that sometimes the wealthier the person is, the more arrogant the person is. Isn't it clear to us from what we read that we should not worry about those worldly things 
and we should worry about God's kingdom. Now, the fifth thing is to be grateful and thankful. We need to be grateful for what God has provided. Many of us go to a store and is able to and we're able to buy what we like, able what we want to get what we want. Be grateful, be thankful because God is giving us more than we deserve. Because it doesn't matter what people think, what you're wearing, or how you are presenting yourself in wealth, it is more important what God thinks of you. God wants a grateful heart. And we show a grateful heart in our behavior. We should always be thankful because people watch us and when they watch us, they know who we are. We can be a good example to them. In 1 Timothy 6, 8, it says, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. When I read this, I am so humbled and I say thank you God for your provision and how much you have given us. May I be a source of blessing to others through my behavior. Number six, God will always provide for us. In Luke 12, 32, it says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Listen carefully, the kingdom. He did not say, I'm going to make sure you have luxury. He's going to get here in, on this earth. He's going to give us the kingdom itself, not worldly luxury. God gives us our needs here on earth. And he gives us everything in his kingdom. When we look at Psalms, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He takes care of us. Psalm 28. He has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. He helps me. Psalm 78, 70. He chose David his servant to be the shepherd of his people. Psalm 79, 13. For we are your people and the sheep of your pastor, pasture. Psalm 100, know the Lord is God, it is he who made us, and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. God has provided Jesus, the good shepherd, who, who gave his life for us. No one can give us what Jesus has given us. He gave his life for us. And lastly, number seven, where should you place your treasure? Luke 12, 33 says, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is telling us, put your trust 
in God. Jesus is putting our trust in check. Who do you believe? You need to put your treasure where God is. He is your treasure. And Jesus wants us to count our blessings. He wants us to be thankful. And pay attention to the word that says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your heart? How do you spend your money? Where do you spend it? How do you spend your time? What concerns you? What makes you anxious? You can fool anybody, but you cannot fool God. If you are anxious about your children, your family, your, your bank account, re-examine where your trust is. Now every one of us has to bear a little cross in this life because Jesus bore the largest cross, the most important cross. No matter how much I gather in this life, I am not going to take it with me. God is the giver of life. I humbly say, thank you, God, for giving us life. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for providing for us. And look at what we have in this world. We have technology now that can spread his word. Let us be good witnesses to you and speak your word and tell others what a great giver you are. And we should never worry. Take away our worry. We are going to put it under your feet. And all my strength will be put toward serving you. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.